Welcome back everyone. It is Miss Wagers and I'm excited to continue reading with you today. We are going to be comparing our last two stories, Anatomy of a Volcanic Eruption and A Tsunami Unfolds. So let's see what our learning intentions are for today. We are learning to compare different accounts of similar events so we can see how authors present similar topics differently. So we know we are successful when we can compare word choice in different texts and also determine the author's purpose for each text. So we'll think about the author's purpose for both anatomy of a volcanic eruption and a tsunami unfolds, along with looking at the word choices that the authors used. Your foundational skills practice today is on the suffixes O-U-S, A-B-L-E, and I-B-L-E. Um, remember that those suffixes are added to the end of a word. Suffixes go on the end of the word, not the beginning, the end. So some of the words that we have as examples are the word dangerous, breakable, and accessible. Now remember that O-U-S means full of, able it means able to be, along with the I-B-L-E. Those both mean able to be. So you can see that dangerous would be full of danger and breakable and accessible. Breakable would be able to be broken and accessible would be able to be accessed. Continuing on, we have some other words that we can use as examples. So we have like the word hazardous. So you can see that that has what suffix? O-U-S, right? And so we know that would be full of, because O-U-S means full of, so full of hazards or like danger, problems, right? And then avoidable has that suffix A-B-L-E. And so it also that means able to be avoided. So we can say this is an avoidable situation. It's able to be avoided. And then convertible, also able to be. And then our base word is convert, so able to be converted. Have you ever heard of like a convertible car? When the roof goes down, it's converted, right? For your foundational skills practice, you need to circle the suffix in each word and then use each word in a sentence. You might need to look them up using an online dictionary. So remember how you can go to Google and type like the first word, the word vigorous, type the word vigorous and then the word definition and Google, it's amazing, it will tell you what the word means. Like I said, we are comparing text today. So I want you to think as I show, show you some of the pages from our last two stories, what are some ways that the two texts are similar in form and content? So form is like how they are presenting the information and the content is like what they're talking about. So let's look back at our text. So this is anatomy of a volcanic eruption. And we can see it's telling where the plates meet, convergent plates, the ring of fire. I have a diagram, I have maps, I have a photograph. Oh, more diagrams here talking, it looks very informational. They gave me lots of information about volcanic eruptions. And then we have another photograph. And then this is a tsunami unfolds. So again, it seems to be informational. Um, we have a picture of a seismograph and a map. We have another photograph and more maps with information. And then we also have Japan's biggest earthquake again with more photographs. And photo, whoops, and more photographs again with a real person this time thinking about their experience. So when we're thinking about this, we wanna think how are these the same in form and content? So what do both of these have in common? Well, both texts had photographs. They had pictures of real things. So that's something that they have in, con in common based on the form, like how do they look? They have pictures. They both had maps, right? So they both included maps of the world in different places. Um, a tsunami unfolds really showed the map of where the tsunami took place. And in content, they're both informational. They're giving you information. Anatomy of a volcanic eruption is giving you information about all types of volcanoes, where a tsunami unfolds is giving you information about one event in history. And then I didn't show you, but these also have, if you have the actual books, they both have glossaries, um, which gives you the definition of words. And they also have charts in them as well. So we also want to think about the author's purpose. That was one of our success criteria is to be able to identify the author's purpose for each text. And so I have used this little um, poster before 
What's the author's purpose? You can remember it's as easy as pie, persuade, inform, or entertain. Um, thinking about a tsunami unfolds. It's giving you information. It's giving you information about a specific event. So that is informational. And anatomy of a volcanic eruption. Which one is it? Right. It's inform as well. These are both informational texts and they are trying to inform you about different things. So a tsunami unfolds is telling you all about the tsunami that took place in Japan. Whereas anatomy of a volcanic eruption is giving you information about volcanoes. So both of the author's purposes in these texts are to inform. And then we can also look for scientific terms in the text to compare. So this is where we're going to think about the author's word choices or other success criteria for the day. Um, so we are going to look back at the text here and I want to look for some scientific words. Hmm. Where plates meet, the plates that make up Earth's crust flow on top of the mantle like ships at sea. Oh, the word mantle, right? That is a scientific word telling you um, a part of the Earth's crust, the mantle. We're not talking about what's over your fireplace. We're talking about in the Earth's crust. The plates move because the mantle's rocks are in constantly in motion. They don't move quickly but they move enough to cause changes in Earth's surface over time. Some plates move toward each other. These are called convergent plates. So again, another scientific term, convergent plates. That is a very specific scientific term that we would have to know the definition of convergent plates when they move towards each other. Those are convergent plates. So then down low, it gives us more information about convergent plates, right? When two plates collide, the um, denser one moves underneath the lighter one. That's what happens when an oceanic plate collides with a continental plate. Whoops, got a little too far ahead. We'll take that off and we'll keep reading. The oceanic plate goes underneath the continental plate. Earthquakes are common in these plate boundaries because um, they create it, they are created by a collision. The solid rock of the new, of the oceanic plate partially melts into magma. There we go. There's another scientific term, magma. That is a scientific term having to do with volcanoes, of course, as it moves deeper into the mantle. This magma is pushed up into the continental plate and forms a volcano. Many volcanoes are formed around convergent plate boundaries. Huh, interesting. I didn't know that. So convergent plate boundaries where a continental plate meets an oceanic plate. And then, of course, lastly, we have just the word plate in general. So then we can also look for words that describe the location of the ring of fire. Let's look for more scientific terms to describe that. So for example, we have the word, um, the word volcanoes. That's really important. Volcanoes, where you can go like, yeah, I'm just wait your favorite. But it still is a scientific term. We need to know what a volcano is and what it's made of. So. One of the most famous convergent plate boundaries on Earth is found in the Pacific Ocean. It is where the Pacific plate meets all of the continental plates surrounding it. The area is called the Ring of Fire because more than 450 volcanoes are found there. In fact, 75% of the world's volcanoes on land are found in the Ring of Fire. So again, another scientific term that we could say is also like the Pacific Ocean, ocean plate even, or the, the continental plates. And then we are going to look for more scientific terms um, used in a tsunami unfolds right here. So just in this one little small, small part of the text though. So they're describing the ring of fire as well. The Japanese islands are located in the ring of fire. About 90% of the world's earthquakes occur in this region. It contains a string of active volcanoes and several tectonic plates meet here. So some scientific terms we have are like active volcanoes. So what is an active volcano? We would have to know that along with tectonic plates. It's another scientific term that we would need to know the meaning of. So let's look at the list of words. So I wrote down all the words that we I pointed out in the text and we want to think about how these words are similar. How can we compare these? So in anatomy of volcanic eruption, we had the word volcanoes, convergent plate boundaries, magma, mantle, and a tsunami unfolds, we had like active volcanoes and tectonic plates. So we want to think, hmm, 
Well, anatomy of volcanic eruption seemed to have a lot more scientific words than a tsunami unfolds. And I know we only looked at a small part of a tsunami unfolds, but the anatomy of a volcanic eruption really had a lot of words in um, short text. Like I had arrows pointing everywhere. So they were using a lot of very descriptive and scientific words, whereas a tsunami unfolds, it still used some scientific words, but not as many. And I bet you remember if you were reading, a tsunami unfolds was a little bit easier to understand. They told it a little bit more like a story. So when we think back to comparing the text, we did say that both of these have the same author's purpose to inform. However, um, anatomy of a volcanic eruption, while it's trying to inform, it is very truly a scientific text where it's trying to give you a lot of very specific and detailed information. And we can see that from the word choices that the author uses. The author uses lots of very specific scientific words to describe volcanic eruptions and volcanoes to really give you information. Whereas in a tsunami unfolds, the author's purpose is to inform, but it's not quite as scientific. It's telling it more like a story, which makes it easier for you to understand. In that case, the author really wanted you to understand the situation and what happened there and not as much of the science behind it. So more of the scientific words that they use had to do with where the story took place and were localized more around Japan. So there's a difference there. While they're both trying to inform, a tsunami unfolds is a little less scientific and a little bit more of a story, whereas anatomy of, vol of a volcanic eruption is simply telling you about um, volcanoes and how they work. And that is all for today, y'all. So we're going to go back and review our learning intentions. We are learning to compare different accounts of the same event so we can see how authors present similar topics differently. Um, we know we're successful when we can compare word choice in different texts. So we did that by looking at the words in both texts and thinking about how they are the same and different. Check. And then we also determined the author's purpose for each text. And we said that they're both to inform, but within their inform, they're a little bit different, right? Yeah. Check. And for your reading response, I want you to list at least three ways that anatomy of a volcanic eruption and a tsunami unfolds are similar. How are they the same? Um, use evidence from the text to explain your thinking. So give me three ways. And I will have these stories linked so you can go back through the entire stories and review. So you can think about ways that they're similar. So think about things that they include, maybe their topics, how does the author address things? You can be really creative with that. So make sure that you are really thinking. Put on that thinking cap. Boom. All right. That is all for today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Be kind to one another. Do all of your assignments like I tell you every single time. That's how you get smarter. And I will see you guys later. Bye.